good evening, friends, and welcome, one and all, to Little Port Christian Spiritualists. It's a pleasure to welcome you all back into Chateau Delnick, into the Boudoir de la Brown. And it is a pleasure to see you all coming on live, the numbers clicking up and the welcomes and hellos from everybody, both new faces and familiar faces coming up the side of the screen there. It's always, always a pleasure. So welcome, welcome. And of course, welcome to uh, everyone who is currently not watching live, but watching later on in the week. You are also most, most welcome. We know that there are some that can't always make it on a Thursday night. But the wonder and the joy of modern technology means that you can join us at any time. And um, I find it quite uh, uplifting in that way, because that's exactly how spirit works. They can join us at any time. It doesn't have to be on a Thursday night or a Sunday night. It's always a case of whenever they feel like it. And we know this because of the experiences we have. So welcome, welcome one and all. And of course, tonight we've got our usual uplifting service. We've got a reading from Everend Allen. We've got Sam and Hannah and Bully and another guest uh, in, in their living room waiting in the wings. And of course, we will be hearing shortly from Reverend Lynn, uh, which is something that I know we all look forward to every week. But of course, no Thursday evening would be the same without welcoming a guest, a friend, and a communicator on behalf of the world of spirit. And this week, we are very, very pleased. A new face online, but certainly not a new face to Littleport. We've been uh, having him visit us off and on now for a good few years. He uh, is a lovely, lovely guy, and I am proud and pleased to welcome David. Are you there? Hi, everybody. It's lovely to be with you. Hey, how you been getting on, David? Well, wonderful. Stuck at home as everybody else. But yes. no, online is okay. So we have this tool together. So this is really good. Brilliant. So life could be worse. Uh, absol no, absolutely. I totally agree. Yeah. I totally, totally agree. And of course, we were obviously, this is your first time on StreamYard, I believe, as well. So we had a bit of a a, a test earlier on and we were chatting away about the meaning of life the universe and everything and mm -hmm. it was it was quite a, an important conversation i think personally for me um because i'm sure those that know me know that i've been a little bit down lately um lots of things have been going on in the world of nick but it's important to remember that people like us mediums ministers whoever you are, you always have those moments of slight wobbles and frustration and, and downness and disappointment because we are human. And um, I have to say that the conversation that we had, David, was absolutely well-timed. Uh, so I want to thank you because for those that don't know, uh, a friend of mine uh, that I've known for nearly 20 years now uh, passed away uh, shortly after the end of the service for uh, Reverend Lynn, uh, for Le Reverend Wendy, when I was actually stood with Reverend Lynn um, on Remembrance Day, I received a message that my friend had passed. And there was an irony to that, that it was Remembrance Day and I'd got my friend with me, stood there. Um, we weren't holding hands, of course, because that was against the law, um, but she was in arm's length anyway. And um, we we lost Andy. Now, Andy is a very, very, very interesting individual. For those that ro watch regularly, I quite often quote Babylon 5. And not only was our George the Healer a, a, a big fan, so was Andy. And uh, I've been getting lots of quotes about Babylon 5 over the last few weeks. And certainly uh, things that have been said to me have been very much in, in the theme of those uh, conversations that Andy and I had. Now, Andy was the kind of person who believed what he believed and never, ever gave up on his own thoughts, his own opinions and his own needs. And uh, you reminded of me that uh, earlier, David, and I want to thank you for that, because even though Andy and I didn't share the same opinions about the afterlife, uh, we did have a bit of a bet on, and um, 
you know, eventually I'm sure he'll admit that I won, uh, which was the whole point of the bet. Uh, but um, I do, as everyone knows, I have my, my wall uh, of memory uh, in the background. And of course, that yellow tie dangling over my shoulder is for the yellow peril himself. So um, God bless you all. And if you are having difficulties in your week, as I'm sure many of you are, because that seems to be what uh, brings many people to our way of life. I can only offer this one simple piece of advice. Talk to somebody and be yourself, because it worked for me today uh, when I was having a bit of a low moment. And so thank you for that, David. And to all of you sitting at home, if you need someone to talk to, just talk. It really, really, really does help. So, um, David, again, thank you for that. And thank you for joining us tonight. I know it's going to be a wonderful night. It always is when you visit us in the Village Hall. And although we're not in the Village Hall today, we have got it behind us. So um, we're not too far, really. But for now, we are going to welcome onto the screen with us um, uh, my other good friend who I was talking about a moment ago and her name is Reverend Lynn Gibbs Swart. Are you there? Are you there? I am here, Reverend Nick and David. Lovely to see you, Hi. David. Lovely to Hi. see and, you. And uh, looking, looking, for, you looking forward to the service and your part in it, of course, which is uh, the part of our spiritualist service, which is most important, I always think. I know that our philosophy is important, but I know that quite a few people go to sleep during it. And uh, I, used to, I used to say to uh, our congregation when I was giving, uh, you know, the usual, serve, you know, the address and so on, where unlike now they can't, that they couldn't turn me off. You know, now people can just go, oh, we're not listening to that and move it along a bit, you know, until they get to the good bit, which is your bit, David, where you give the messages. And, uh, you know, people used to come late deliberately to miss the prayers and the, everything else and to get to the mediumship part. But, um, yeah, so uh, I must say that um, it, it's really nice to uh, be able to, uh, you know, to have these services where people can pick and choose what they're going to watch and listen to. And uh, to know that, you know, yourself, David, you, you will be definitely listened to whatever. Um, they may turn me off or mute me or whatever, but they will listen to you, David. So, I mean, that's a, that, that is a great benefit. Mm -hmm. I, I was amused about the bet that um, Reverend Nick had made with Andy because um, it one of those bets, you know, when, when we bet each other things that are going to be settled in heaven in the spirit realms, it, <laughs> I don't know what our prize is going to be. You know, what? there's no money over there. You know, there's no material goods that you can win. You know, so the bet in itself is is a sort of an ex existential metaphysical bet. But uh, I think it's one that, that ha has more joy in it of the winning than anything else. You know, yeah. um, because really when push comes to shove, you know, the material world and, and all the goods in it are as nothing compared to love and compassion and kindness and caring, all those things that we call abstract, which are really the pith and moment of life. And uh, I think that your your bet will be well won. And I can only imagine what amazing, you know, uh, gifts that you both will, will be able to bestow on each other when you eventually get over there and uh, tell him, well, I won my bet, didn't I? You know, that, that would be really nice to, to actually be there at the time. Well, I will be. <laughs> I shall make sure of that. Wherever I am over there, you know, I will. If, if I know that you're coming over, Nick, then, of course, you know, I will make I will make every step. I'm sure I'll be told anyway. Well, in advance, of course, because that's the other thing. You know, we talk about prediction and, we, you know, th there's this terrible sort of um you know, we must not predict. It's, it's the one thing that I remember being drummed into me when I first began to study mediumship and, and to develop my own abilities. 
and we must not tell fortunes, we must not tell the future, we must not predict anything. But if you look through the ages and the thousands of years that mediums have been with us and, and recorded in history, everybody and everybody who's actually been talked about the most has actually predicted things. You know, they've interpreted dreams, that they, they predicted outcomes. You know, um, and people have consulted mediums right to the beginning, and it's in the Bible. You know, the, it, the, the Bible that's often quoted at us, there's only a tiny bit in it that says they must not consult spirits and mediums and stuff like that, a tiny weeny bit in the Bible. And it's sort of, you'd think it was the whole Bible, but the way people carry on about it, you know, oh, you know, it's all wrong. No, 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 the Bible just devotes a tiny few words to it, you know. And and Jesus never said anything about it, and God never actually said anything about it. It was some miserable Watsits who wanted to control the population who actually said it and put it in. Oh, yes, we'll write about this. Well, as an editor and a writer myself, I know how easy it is to slip the odd thing in, you know. And even now you hear people on evangelistic platforms particularly talking about the Lord said to them. The Lord gave them a message. Well, that's great. You know, I wish the Lord would give me a few messages, you know, um, and I think they must be, you know, saintly people. But then when you look into it, they're not actually saintly at all. You know, they're just ordinary people who have a gift that they've developed as we have. But of course, they're, they won't uh, talk about mediumship. They talk about being prophets of the Lord or something. And, and apparently God has given them a special seal of approval. Even those who I uh, venture to, I won't mention any names, somebody who's got a worldwide ministry and has had cosmetic surgery. And, and, and there she stands preaching about, you know, otherworldliness and so on and so forth. And, and yet she's had all her face cut to ribbons in order to pro project an image that she doesn't have. Because what she'll get a shock about there, when she goes over, she'll get it all back. She'll get it back. What's all been cut off and mucked about is she'll get back. And the lovely thing is, of course, that when we do go over there, um, we can project ourselves as we would wish. So, in fact, we do get our useful looks back if that's what we want. But then uh, you might find, as I did, when I met my grandparents and they presented to me as young people, I hardly, I didn't actually recognise them at first until my grandmother smiled and then I realised who they were. And that was quite a shock. So I'd rather have met her old, if you know what I mean. Anyway, I digress. The fact is that, um, you know, we all, ha we all have this uh, ability and uh, it it's very interesting. And the prediction part of it, as I said, you know, you can find it in the Bible. All these, all these people that people, um, you know, revere and rightly so, quite often, um, have have predicted. And you know, Joseph and the dreams, and you know, it actually resulted in Pharaoh. Let uh, apart from the plagues, it, I think he was going to let the people go anyway because, like, they were too much trouble, and uh, they certainly could do a lot of predicting. And the predictive outcomes weren't always good. Like, um, you know, if you look through the Bible, you can see lots of predictions of people uh, getting, you know, getting off on the wrong side of the stick and stuff like that. And people getting smited and killed and vanquished. Um, and, and it's all predicted. And that's all written about in the Bible. But it's the same Bible that people say we shouldn't, you know, we shouldn't talk to spirits and, and so on coming back to our way of life, our spiritualist way of life, as I said, I was literally brainwashed into saying, you know, do not predict anything, do not tell fortunes, don't do anything, you know. Um, and of course, the, the other big stick that they used to hit us with is the fact that we could get prosecuted for telling fortunes. But tell that to the gypsy camp down the road. You know, no, no, it's, it's ridiculous. You know, you, you buy a bit of heather, and you get your fortune told, you know, and you can take it or leave it. So I don't think that it's too dreadful a thing. The other thing is this, that some prediction really helps us. And if we get told by the right people, this is what I say, if it's, if it's a loved one who tells you something that's going to happen in the future, you can trust that. You can trust that. If 
you are a medium and somebody is asking you about things that will happen in their future and if their loved one tells you or a trusted guide tells you and you would like to impart that that information to them then i don't see there's anything wrong in that because people have been doing that anyway for thousands of years so uh, whether we think that uh, you shouldn't tell fortunes and shouldn't predict uh, wh what I think that really means is that you shouldn't tell people bad news. You shouldn't tell people things that, you know, are inevitable and perhaps really bad for them, you know, to know about. So I think that personal responsibility, one of our major principles, comes into that. And uh, everything we do, we have to have that sense of personal responsibility towards others, and especially as mediums, you know, when we are giving them information. And if we are giving them, uh, information about their future you know so often you hear people say things like you know oh well in the summer so and so so and so or at christmas such and such and and so they should and as long as it's reasonably good and if it's not good and it's in a private consultation and somebody wants to know um it's almost like being in a, in a consulting room with with a uh, one of the medical profession who has to tell you something that's not not quite good you know but sometimes people would know would want to know what the outcome is of a particular problem that they're having and if the outcome doesn't look as if it's that good then i think that if they want to know that and and you have that information from there then you know it's up to you whether you tell them or not um yes i know lots of people still who say well they'd like a sitting but they don't want to know anything bad and I've, I've always said to people, you don't ha you don't hear anything bad about a sitting. Why would anybody say anything bad to you? Because you only get loved ones who come through. Love is the operative word. Love is kind. Love is patient. Love is caring. That's in the Bible. So um, I won't go on too long because we need to make space for all the other lovely things that happen in one of our spiritually services, especially, I must say, at Little Port. You know, we are a lovely, a lovely church, if I say so myself. And uh, it's a wonderful village and it has a great history. And uh, I advise people very much to look on our uh, Facebook page, at Little Port Life magazine or Little Port Living Extra. And they can find out all about what goes on in our village. And, it, and it's nothing like, um, you know, Miss Marple or Midsummer Murders. And um, and also we we have a, a website which is littleportlifemagazine.co.uk. Little so go on that as well. So there we are. So I've done my little bit of sort of um, publicity Lovely. for the village as well. Um, and of course, everybody here knows about our church. So I don't have to say too much about that. Um, I would hope that when we are back in the village hall proper, that people that have enjoyed the services with you, Reverend Nick, and will enjoy this evening with you too, David, um, will actually, you know, hot foot it or get on the train or drive and, and come to this wild and hostile part of the of, of, of the English fens. Um, no, 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 I kid you not. There was a Pathé, Pathé, News, Pathé News reel um you know in the 1940s and this very plummy faced person sort of said um yes well of course this is the fens of east anglia and there you can see the people skating on the on the frozen washes and um you know the people here are re reputed to be very wild and hostile and you know that that's the truth so the fact is is that people only come to Liverpool if they want to come here other than that, they whiz past because they're a bit frightened. We have a reputation. Look up the Little Port Riots of 1816 and you might see why. And not to mention our Bikers Club. Um, God bless you all. And uh, you'll notice I didn't talk about Adam and Eve, Eve and, Eve and Eve, Steve and Adam and Steve or yogurt pots. Not tonight, <laughs> um, if you're puzzled, David, do have a look at some of the past addresses 
Um, uh, Reverend Nick will, will give you a hint as to as to what dates yes. they were made on. And um, I'll leave you with those thoughts. God bless you. God bless you all. Thank you, Thank you Lynn. And I'm um, just Lynn, and I'm um, just put you on mute a second because um it's interesting you should talk about not giving bad news. I remember a very young and about 10 stone heavier student of yours attending um, Elstree Studios with you um, on a certain TV show to talk about mediums not giving bad news. Um, and this, of course, is the Kilroy show, um, which was in the same location that East Enders was recorded at the time. I think they've moved now or something, but hang on, let me unmute you first. Let me unmute you first. I was going to mention East Enders and I didn't. I skated over it quickly. You know, when I was talking about, I thought, no, not East Enders, Miss Marple will do. Yes, yes. Gonna yes. say, we, we, we yeah, don't have, such, we, a we, we don't have such a high count as them. such a high count as them. Bless you. Thank you, Lynn. And I, I think it's also fair to explain to you the bet that I had with Andy. Andy, when you had a conversation with him, you only ever walked away and thought you'd won because he let you think you'd won. However, I did get one over of him for 24 hours. And that was this bet, which is why I'm so proud of it. I bet with him uh, this. I said to him, well, I tell you what, if there's an afterlife, um, when I get over there and we both meet over there, you owe me 20 quid. However, um, if there isn't, when we get over there, I owe you 20 quid. And he didn't twig that I'd conned him right until about 24 hours later. Um, and that's a bit of a, a long running joke that we had together. Um, the only time I ever got one over on him for 24 hours and that was it. Uh, but thank you, Lynn, for reminding me of this particular event, which is still on tape. I still need to transfer it to digital. I will one day um, when I can tolerate seeing myself in that lovely blue shirt that made me look like a blueberry. Um, but it was a good day nonetheless. So thank you, Lynn. And I'm sure we'll see you at the end for your final words. Thank you. And God bless you, darling. See you soon. Well, sir. Uh, now is the time when we invite one more person up to have our reading uh, before we have our healing and then the mediumship. Um, we've got Linda sitting waiting and then we've got Jo, she's going to come up and we're actually making a bit of space for a, a, an extra reading tonight as well. So we've got two Traces, a Linda and a Jo and a Hannah who's going to get her own special prize, but don't tell anybody that. But certainly don't tell her that because she won't want to spoil that surprise. So, um, Alan, Reverend Alan, are you there, sir? I am, Nick. Good evening. Good evening, David. Um, lovely address again, as usual, Lynn. I, I really struggle to get a reading to, together today, and that is unusual. Um, I, I just trolling through like I do. And, and then all of a sudden one hit me and I'd like to share it with you all. Um, but I do feel that this is going to have some kind of special meaning for you, Reverend Nick. So um, pin nine ears and um, I'm sure there's something in here for you. Uh, and it is called My Soul is Marching On. The shining stars are sunk in darkness deep. The weary sun is dead at night. The moon's soft smile doth fade anon. But still my soul is marching on. The grinding wheel of time has crushed. Full many a life of moon and star. And many a brightly smiling morn. But still my soul is marching on the flowers bloomed then hid in gloom the bounty of the trees did cease colossal men have come and gone but still my soul is marching on the eons one by one are flying my arrows one by one are gone dimly slow 
Lee, life is fading, but still my soul is marching on. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Yes, absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And I'm sure that will not only mean a lot to me, but many other people as well. Um, not least of all those connected to a, a yellow bow tie, a yellow tie hanging behind me. So, Alan, thank you for that. It really, really, really was exactly what you said. Thank you. Very, for that, very man. welcome. Bless you. Well, I think now is an appropriate time to have some healing, don't you? Oh, he's not lovely. listening to me. <laughs> yeah, there we are. He, he, he's back with us. Cheers, Alan, and we'll see you later on. Bless your heart, mate. Thank you. Well, David, um, I, just in reference, I don't need to tell you what the date is because Karen's already told us. Um, the video you need to look at is on the 13th of August to understand what the yogurt pots meant. Uh, okay, a, a, a very uplifting service, and I wasn't in it. Um, but it was very much an uplifting one nonetheless. Um, and just in reference, Michael, uh, Kilroy did not come out of Teddington Lock at the time that I was there. It was actually behind the laundrette on Albert Square. Um, and the, the, um, the green room, the green room was actually next to Phil Mitchell's arch. Um, it was in one of the arches and the, um, the actual studio, you had to walk underneath the bridge where they leave EastEnders for the final time. Um, you had to walk underneath the bridge on Bridge Street past the laundrette to get into the studio. So there's a little bit of useless information if ever you did hear one. And so now, friends, um, is the important time in our service when we send out our healing thoughts to all those who are sick and suffering and in need of comfort. In particular, we should send our healing thoughts to Simon Clark's friend's wife, who is having kidney trouble. And I would also like to ask for uh, healing thoughts to be sent to Fleur and her family and to uh, Tom and to Laura. And uh, of course, anyone you know who is in need of healing, send out those thoughts and ask. And you don't need a full name. You don't even need a first name. You just ask because spirit knows where it's going to go. And so we will start our healing as ever with the healing prayer, which is great spirit, Father, Mother, God. Here we bring unto you all those who are sick and suffering and in need of comfort, be they sick in mind, body or spirit, that it may please thee to heal them. Both those we know, those we do not know, and those who have no one to ask for them, we ask for them now. Amen. Well, thank you, friends, for joining in that healing. And of course, now is the time when everyone looks forward to it for two reasons. Number one, it's the mediumship. And number two, I shut up. Uh, we're now going to hand over the service to our David, who's uh, been waiting so patiently um, to give his demonstration. Are you ready, good sir? Well, I hope so. But before we start, I just I just disagree with Lynn. Most people do, but that's all right. I'm a great believer within the address and the philosophy. And and that is the moment where everybody gets something for them to be uplifted and, and feel that power. So in a oh, way, mediumship, yeah. mediumship is, is, is wonderful, those contacts. And I pray that in that format that we have it today, which is a bit different to how I normally work, will work out. But I have to say the address is the most beautiful part 
of the whole service. So thank you, Lynn, for that one. And I have to admit, I'm sure, and I can see from her face that she actually does agree with you. It's just that unfortunately, so many people are only interested, uh, is the point that she was making. And it is a shame because you know from times having stood on the platform with me when I've done my address, we could go on for about two hours before I blooming well shut up. Um, so we, we do we do well to keep Lynn to the time that sh she does actually. But I'm, I know, and I know from the teachings that, that I experienced as a student of Lynn, she agrees with you on that. It's We have to recognise, unfortunately, that we need to educate people on that. So, so well done for bringing yeah. it up, your friends and helpers. The reason why I said that is not to criticise Lynn, but to I encourage know. her to maybe bore people a little bit longer. <laughs> okay? Well, I'm sure she'll be very pleased with that. <laughs> How well put. I love it. He's definitely one of us, that's for sure. Excellent. Thank you, uh, David. And um, everyone's agreeing with you um, that, that she should bore us longer. Um, and of course, the point is that philosophy is mediumship. So um, let's have some connection mediumship rather than philosophical. Um, although I'm sure there will be philosophical in yours because I've seen how you work. Uh, so let's get your first reading up. Let's hope that her sound problem has resolved and she's found out where the volume button is. Mm, Linda, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, as hi, she Linda. Is. Right, I'm off. See you later. Love you all. Uh, that's a really nice surprise, Linda. I know you a little bit, but not too much about your life. Is that okay? Is that right? Yes. Yeah, fine. Okay. Yeah. And, and for everybody who will follow up, now is for me it's really important that you are really honest with me if you don't understand you don't understand and you say so yes please yeah uh what i also need is the yeses and no because there is no point okay. in in me saying something and you don't really know what i'm talking about and the okay. other thing that i also have to say is because it also always leaves a residue within the world of spirit that something wasn't quite right Okay. And that then concerns me afterwards. So I just need honesty, I have to say. I know, Linda, your father is in the world of spirit. Yes. But I know that this is not enough proof. Because I know your dad, and he is kind of a dad, even though he has authority. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because there is a there is a there is a there is a funny, uh a jokey um side to him but as soon as he meant business you would know what it was all about and you had to listen oh, he's yeah. not a man that would like to repeat himself over and over and over and over again true yes and i must say i smile a little bit because he laughed um so it's it's, it's me you having to put that right he laughed the girls the boys had it a bit more difficult with him. Okay. Do you understand that? No, not not really. Okay. Let, because, because it seems that he brings in the memory here. And this memory goes back into your childhood. And I, I seem to know and feel that you weren't always the behaved, staying at home, child you were the one that needs to go out and enjoy the world does that make sense i like to be outside yeah yes because it is like i need to play i'm not interested kind of uh girl related stuff i like to be yeah. with everybody else yes i wouldn't say i wouldn't go that far to call to have called you tom um uh, what is it tomboy yeah is that well yeah you could <laughs> Okay, well, but 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 there is this this um, with your dad. It's like he sees something, and he he because I feel that you could also be a bit naughty, but you could get away with with no being naughty with him. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. Because it's like it's like mm, one eye's a bit closed here. I have to say, it's like I saw it. I'm not going to tell anybody that I know about that. Does that make sense? 
It so does. this is where I where I would say, um, especially when it was about partners and boys around you, he would he would be a kind of a hawk. He would look out, watch out for you. He would not yeah. easily just accept anybody. No. I have to say, because he's the protector. He wants his girl to be, to have everything. Yeah. So he, yeah. it's lovely. I have to say, he has, he has this worldly intelligence, which is not of the university, but he has True. that wisdom. Yes. And, yeah. and, and, and also the working guild where, where, where people come together uh, hardworking with his hands as well is, is yes. where he feels very comfortable. Yeah. He would not have felt comfortable to parade. Oh, no, no. It's like, it's like all of a sudden I just see royalty and the parade. I don't know why, because that, there must have been like celebrations and the parade that comes through within his memory that mm -hmm. he is interested, but I don't really need that fuss. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. so there is, there is kind of a silent, um, it's really interesting. I want to say silent pride within him. Yes. Because it, it seems yeah. that he did good, but he didn't have to present it to the world. Yes, that's true. It's, yeah. like, it's like, do you know what? Uh, you just do good deeds because you want to do good deeds. It's not about talking about good deeds. It's just doing them. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, if I feel that correctly, you like to do that as well. Yeah. Silent yeah. deeds. Would you understand? <laughs> Yeah, but but Linda, just just if I'm wrong here, please tell me, okay? Because it feels like like you like to surprise people, but you not always own up that it was you that did the good deed. No, you let them know. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't admit it. Ah, okay. So that's correct. What I said. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, okay. Sorry, uh, this confuses me still. After so many years living in this country, when I get the no, and it's actually correct, though. Okay. So, so what what I know, and and you know, your your dad is also very very a lover of um, freedom. He True. wasn't. He didn't like to be told what to do, and to be stuck inside would not have been his cup of tea. I have to say. He would have had no. an opinion about that one. And I know it's not, or I seem to feel from your dad, it's not always easy for you to be stuck at home. No. I want to be out now, but I can't. <laughs> I know. And and yeah. being restricted by other people or by, by government is not how you like to live your life. So no. I know that, that this frustration is, is there and, and it feels like, that your dad, towards his end, he was very restricted in his li liberty, in his his moving around. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And and what is really the point there is being restricted, then all of a sudden made him aware that he's not well. Yeah. Because before he was at least free to do what he wanted to do, and all of a sudden he was classed as. I am not well. Yeah. And he couldn't just avoid this. So he had that he had to to focus his mind onto that and that wasn't good for his mental attitude. Do you understand that? Yes, I understand. Okay. And I know yeah and I'm not going into two personal things, but is it's also I know that for you it's it's really important at the moment to try to focus on the positive side somehow. Yeah. But, but the point is also <laughs> is in doing good to other people, it gives you that satisfaction. Yeah. And there is where it's a bit <laughs> difficult. Yeah. Um, he understands so much 
yet in a very silent way. So I know he would not have told you what to do. No. And that's the same now. He would not tell you what to do. But what he is conveying here is that he understands how it feels to be stuck and how it feels then to have too much time to focus upon the not feeling well. Yes, yeah. And that draws down and goes into that spiral of, hang on, I am still good enough to do everything that I want to do. Okay. Mm. So he brings you this, this understanding here. And I know it is not good enough that people say it will be over soon. This will have an end. It doesn't matter because we are living in the now. And mm -hmm. there he gives you your, your lovely self, this, this uh, support. And he just comes back and reminds me of the naughty times where you were just so free. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. those memories need to mean something here. Those memory have the power. So I feel to keep you going. Okay. But nice, you know. So it's like this. Yeah. It's just that is girl, and I hope I feel that correct. He's so proud. He's so proud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Always there. Always around. Okay. Thanks very much. You're welcome. Thank you so much you. for working with me. And I have to say, uh, David, um, for all those that are regulars who've seen mum receive messages over the years, um, that's one of the most well received uh, messages that she's ever received actually because um i have to say that that was such a, a wonderfully evidential and accurate description of granddad um yeah, I, this is, I, this is, I understood every bit of this one yeah and and that's rare trust me i usually have to pop back on the screen and translate a little bit from time to time which is yeah. fine that's my job but um no, no it really no, really I was little. Yeah, I, right Right down to how he was towards the end uh, of his earthly life. Um, it was just so evidential and accurate and definitely, definitely, definitely an absolutely accurate picture of Bill Spalding, the man, the boss. And um, I've even got his medal sitting right next to me at the moment. So um, well done, mate. Thank ah, you very much. Okay, thank That's you very much. All the things that I did. Ah uh, yes, I, I, I like right down to the fact that once upon a time, this innocent, sweet, and kind-looking lady took a bread knife to the banister and chucked a, a cut a chunk off of it. Whoops! Did I say that in public? Never mind. Um, see you later, mother. Yeah, you might. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I couldn't help but get that one. And you, when you was talking about her not always particularly behaving herself, that sprung straight into my head. And I thought, I've got to share that one with you. Well, mm. moving swiftly on, we've got uh, a Joe, a Trace, a Tracy and a Hannah uh, waiting in the wings. So I will shut up and get on with it. And uh, Joe, are you ready? Yes, she is. She's just well, her face says that she's not quite ready, but she's ready anyway. Here we I go. Admit. Hello, Joe. Here we go. Hello, darling. Hi, Nick. How are you? Okay, you're right. So, Joe is the lady with the dark hair. Okay. So, I'll leave you to it. Bye. Okay. The fact hi, that Nick. you are... Hi, hi, Kate, and hi, Joe. The fact that you are together might well be that there are people for both of you, okay? Okay. So, so just listen in if, if I go wrong. But I try to focus upon you, Joe. Is that okay? Yes, of course. Would it be better if I stayed out of the picture, David? No. No, I'm you're sure. okay. there anyway. So All right, darling. <laughs> you, you see, I have, to, I have to, well, we'll see how we go there. All right. <laughs> honestly, I have to say, uh, uh, as I said with Linda, please just be honest, okay? Yes, no, I don't know, really. Um, it's no problem for me. I, I hope or I wish that it's always a yes. 
but we we deal with the no's as well so we can only do our best do you know joe i'm 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 just very aware of a father in the world of spirit but would you also understand the father-in-law in the world of spirit please in yes, yes. So is that a definite yes, father a in definite, law? Yes. Okay. But but what confused me a little bit is the, the father in law felt like a father. No. Okay. Let let me try that. Just let me try that. It's it's okay. really because because confused I am because it's like um I wanna how can I put that um to be really I know he's not a good communicator, I know that one mm -hmm. it, it, it yeah. is difficult for me to put myself. Uh, forward and and to find the right words so he is very clumsy in how he he presents himself does that make sense yes and and he's not a man of of emotions either he would not talk about his emotional state yeah yes yes Good. but what i wanted to say is like he has this attitude to belittle he has this attitude to um, demand respect from a child. He he would have done, yes, yeah. Yeah, and this feels to me like a father. It's like it's not just a father-in-law who who accepts you as a daughter-in-law. It's like telling you what to do or 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 directing you. Does that make sense? It's a bit. Yes. It's a bit yes. Um, and 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 what is really interesting here as well is is he expect women to know their place within the household. Oh, he would have done definitely. You know, he would have sent you, or he would have expected you to help in the kitchen. Yes. And do the washing up, and and leave the boys to do their boy stuff, and. Yes, he, yeah. man, actually. Yes, and but but the other thing is, and I hate to say that is like if you were a good girl, he liked you very much. Right. Okay. It, so his personality. If people did what he expected them to do, everything was okay. Yes. If people didn't, you would know by his behavior that you did something wrong yes very difficult yes very difficult and i have to say very difficult for his wife as well mm. very very submit it feels very the only way to survive that is to be submissive here yes and you know and and i i i it's really nice and and please please just say there is there is such a long journey of you finding yourself and your own voice because there Definitely. was a time where you couldn't really express what what you wanted to express yes and, and you couldn't really express your emotions either yeah, definitely. It was so overwhelming. And, and I know that instead of them going into the outer, you know how it is to go into the within. Yes. And withdraw from everything. Mm, yeah, yeah. But, but you see, sometimes that then for for people outside, they, they feel like, the laugh is withdrawing from them. But for you, it's like I need to go back into my safe space where nobody is allowed to be in. Does that make sense? Very much so, yes. And 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 I know the heart says I know and I want to include them, but somehow this is something that is just... <sighs> 
so difficult to overcome. Yes. And I know that I'm not reading that psychically from your energy field. I know that your that father-in-law knows exactly how that is. Mm. Because because within I, I I must say there is there is a because this is a generation who educated through discipline. Yes. Okay. So whoever was brought up in this house was yeah, you had to to watch out here. And I know that that in him withdrawing he kept himself actually under control. But yet the energy was very, very aggressive there. Right. So I'm okay. not saying that your energy is ex uh, uh, aggressive at all. I'm not saying that. But what I want to say is that it's interesting that he knows how it feels to withdraw mm -hmm. and to have that space because he seemed to have had that space as well or he demanded to have that space. Would you yes. understand that after dinner or lunch he would go he would go into his own room or into the solitude quietness that um that I wouldn't know but okay that so, really yes it does yes okay but what is really interesting here is you need your own space too yes you see but then there is this balance of how much of this own space do I want? Mm -hmm. You need it, but then all of a sudden, it can also feel a bit lonely within that space. Very much. Okay? And, and, and people don't get that quite, that you need that space. Yes. And that makes life a bit difficult. It does. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So communication, and this is the whole reading about it's about communication, okay. expressing your feelings. And it's, it's not about hurting people to say, I don't want to be with you. It's not about that. It's, it's saying, I just need a bit of space, but in an hour, I'm back. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. Yes. And then we can. But this communication seems not always to run smoothly. Does that make sense? Yeah, very much. Yes. Okay, because because what what is what is seen is not how you feel. Yeah. Assumption. There must be a situation that there are a lot of assumption. I have thought that. So so here to 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 get over this obstacle, I have to say, communication is really important. So it brings me back to your father-in-law who had his his demons within. I know he didn't have a nice upbringing either. Okay. That must have been a really, really difficult time. There must have been a father that he had who was very, very dominant as well. Okay. Do you know about that? No, no. Okay. Are you able to ask about that? Not now, because I'm not connected to that family anymore. Okay. But... And don't you worry about that, okay? okay. It, it was just for me to find out if you could find out that in the end I was right. <laughs> oh, okay. We can't help you with that one, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. It's a joke. It doesn't matter, so you don't feel obliged. It's just for you to be free in, in, in really giving the people the information. Hey, I just need a half an hour. Yes. Minutes, and then yeah. I'll be back. And if I appear to be so withdrawn in my own world, everything is still fine. You don't have to worry. Yeah. Thank Does that make you. sense? Yeah. Because Brilliant. Is okay. Yeah. yeah. So, Definitely. so. You might have wished someone else to communicate, but he exactly knows how it feels when one is in this space and a bit trapped in this space too. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much for working with me. That was lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. See, it wasn't that painful, was it, Joe?
No. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's taken how many weeks? Three, four to get you yeah. on screen? Yeah, yeah. No, to get well, in. Thank yeah. you very yeah. much, Joe, for giving me. No, honestly, we have to acknowledge that. It is very private. Yes. And it needs trust. And I, I thank all of the sitters to do that. Oh, bless and your you heart. Think... Thank you. And, and you see, we forget that, that it also needs courage from the world of spirits to be and so honest and come through with these things. Yes. Absolutely. You know, so thank you very much, Joan. And I hope thank I didn't you. ruin you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Bye-bye. Take care, my bye. lovelies, bye. and I'll see you both bye, bye, soon. Bye. 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 Thanks, Nick. Love you. Bye. Love you, bye. Oh. Well done, mate. Oh, well. So uh, moving swiftly on now, yeah. she's have had a bit of technological issue, um, but we will see how we do. Tracy, hello. how are you? I'm fine. My iPad sound is not working, but I can hear it on my phone. So Fabulous. And I don't hear an echo, so you must be fine. Now, uh, the, the love is being shared on the um, on the, the, uh, the messages. So if ever anyone's interested, have a read because everyone's being so kind and so loving and so friendly. And there's going to be some booze up or something when we all get out of uh, lockdown. Uh, but for now, I'm out of the way and it's over to you two. Oh, thank you very much. Hi, Tracy. Everyone's being so kind and so loving. And so <laughs> Hello. Sorry ah. there's a bit of an echo. But... It's no problem for me. Can you hear me properly? Uh, I can't quite hear you, but I will in a minute. I'm a few seconds behind. Yes, I can hear that. So, few seconds behind. It's no problem for me. Okay, I can I, hear I, you I, now. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, um, Tracy, do you understand your dad being in the world of spirit, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Being in the world of spirit, yes, yeah. No, do you know what? He just adores you. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, you know, it's, it's actually interesting that you have a technological problem because he would have had that too. That's so true, yes. It is. He would not understand technology. No. <laughs> and you know what is also interesting is because I there is a stop and go. And that is significant to your dad as well. He would have taken time to communicate, to say something. He is at a kind of a, it is kind of a slow pace with him. He would have taken time to communicate, to say something. He is at a kind of a, it is kind of a slow pace with him. Yeah. And what is really important here, what I feel is to his, his later years and what he was suffering of, what was really affecting his speech even more. Yeah. 
I can't, it's a bit tinny, the feedback. I haven't, yeah. I haven't got earphones on me. You haven't got earphones. May I make a quick suggestion just to help pace yeah. things along? If you turn the um, speakers of whatever it is you're hearing it from away from the computer, yeah. it probably won't be as bad or as echoey because uh, it's the way the speakers are balancing across oh. each other. Yeah, okay, it's gone off now. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Right. Right. Turn the, um, oh, oh, Nick. Nick. Yeah, I have. I have now. Yeah. Is it working? But... Nah. Nick, is it possible yeah. that she might call you and she hears okay. it from your computer and, and then you say yes, no for her? Yeah, um, that's actually an idea. Tracy, do you want to go on? Um, do you want to go on a Facebook a Messenger Live thing? Yeah, I can do. Right, I'm calling you. Because See, this that is suited it up a bit. Yes. Here we go. We try. That's an interesting idea. We'll give it a go. Well. Hello, can you hear me, my dear? Right, bear with me. Let me um let me turn my volume up. Right, David, speak away. Yes, so Tracy, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay? Yes, wonderful. Isn't that awesome? Good. So Tracy, listen, what I was saying is, so so your dad is not the, the quick talker anyway, naturally. But I know that towards his end of the life, it was even more difficult for him to express himself. Yes, it was. And I know that there, there, there are thoughts in the world or going to the world of spirit. I couldn't, I wasn't able to tell him what I really wanted to tell him. Yeah. Because all of a sudden he, he, he passed, he decreased or whatever hit him decreased so rapidly that it was shock for the whole family that it went so quickly. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and you know, uh, he's, do you know, he's a real um family figure so yeah. even though he wasn't he wasn't the one um kind of in charge of the family because that's more mom i have to say yeah. but but he's he wants to be in charge of looking for the family providing for the family that was really really important to him yeah and there is a naughty side to him, I have to say. I love my food. Yeah. And I love the food that I shouldn't actually eat. Yeah. And there is a there is a secret stash of stuff that he shouldn't have eaten. Yeah. Because I know that mom was looking or whoever he was living with, he was on a special kind of, he should have had a bit of a special diet or look, was, yeah. had to look after what he was eating though. Yeah. It is funny. Do you understand when he shows me a shed and in that shed he would have stuff yeah. hidden? His little shed, he goes, he goes smoking his little shed, yeah. Is that right, Luke? I couldn't really yeah. hear that. He used to go and smoke in his little shed. Ah, so it's the smoking. Ah, okay. Sorry, I wasn't aware of the smoking, though. He was a good liar, though. It took quite while, a while to, to realise that he would do that. Do you understand that? Do you accept that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, because, and this is really strange to say that, he would not like to admit that he was actually addicted to something. Yes. That he wasn't able to just quit because he can be a very stubborn person. And when he yes. has something in his mind, you would not be able to move that. No. Yes, true, yes. Yeah. It's, it's like the the, pro, uh, the the mountain has to come to the prophet before anything changes, and even then, it's not quite sure that it will. Yeah. 
but but uh, but with this addiction, he would not have liked to be caught that he wasn't able to control that. Yeah, true. Hmm. Ah. I hope I, it's okay to say that, Tracy. I feel that there is a quite a likeness between you and your dad. Oh yeah, it's important. Well, and and I have to say, it feels like he understands you when you get stubborn. Yeah. <laughs> when you put down the heel. Yeah. And, and do you understand the connection with horses and carriages? Really, but my dad, it's not from Redmere. A, a fanny place. <laughs> <laughs> Redmere. Redmere. Redmere, it's a fanny place. Is that out near Newmarket? No, it's um, oh, the Shippy Hill Way. Oh, the Shippy Hill Way. Oh, yes, I can confirm that there were horses and carriages for Shippy Hill because that would have taken the milk that way. That was the only way to get it. Okay, I don't know about that because I'm foreign, so I have I haven't got the clue what you were talking about. But if you can confirm that, Nick, then that's fine. Because what is going on in your life is is kind of you have stuck your heels down and not even a six spanner of horses is able to move you. Is that correct? Yeah. It's been, it's been so I know that your dad is very much aware of what is going on. And I'm not going into detail because there is no point in going into detail. This is a public environment. But but also, don't you forget that you still have can be putting your heels down, but be flexible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Because because what I seem to feel here is when Dad started to feel unwell, he started to push the loved ones away. He did, he did, he did once, yeah, really bad. Yeah. And you know how that feels to be pushed away. And yeah. with him putting the heels down and when it gets rigid, then it can create the same thing that you experience with your dad. Does that make sense, hopefully? Yeah, yeah. I hope I have put myself across um, correctly. Oh, yeah. I really love my dad. I'm so close to my dad. Um, he's just lovely. That shape is just my dad. And technology is terrible. Like next day. Maybe he's dad did it. I don't know. But yes. That's what, my what? dad. You, you, you really tonight, yeah. Tracy, what, what the conclusion of this whole reading here is that your dad knows what is going on. He understands the stubbornness to put down and, and to make sure that your voice is heard. But don't forget the flexibility within it. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Sometimes we have to move a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for working with me. I'm glad that worked out eventually. Thank you, Nick. Brilliant. Cheers, Tracy. And thank Bye, you Tracy. so much for persevering. And well done, mate. And I'll oh, speak to you soon. You. Bye. Take care, babe. Bye bye bye. Bye bye. Well, um, let's just say that it's kind of like um, we've just had that moment where the BBC have. Um, there I was holding the microphone all the time. The microphone wasn't even connected. It was the speakers and the microphones and the computer doing it. Um, that's that's called an outside broadcast uh, problem, uh, which has been resolved through other means of technology. Thank you for the suggestion. We'll try that in future. Um, and this comes from the medium who was saying to me earlier on, I, I've never quite worked the way you do in this report before with the, the bringing the people up. I'm not. I, I'm, I've, I've never done it like that before online, so we'll see how it goes. Look at you now, mate. Everyone's loving tonight, so well done. Thank you, Nick, but we're not finished yet. Just I know, I know. <laughs> I'm just bigging you up a little bit for the idea. Don't panic. Now, um, we've got another similar-named uh, person uh, coming up before we have a double bubble from the, um, from the right house. Uh, so uh, here we go with Trace. Are you there? Oh, Hello, Trace. Hi, Trace. 
Can you hear us without delay or echo? Ooh. I can. I'm out the way. See you later. <laughs> Hi, Grace. You know what your path is, yes, to be just honest, okay? Yeah, yeah. Do you know, Trace, it's really funny, but I am aware of a mother in the world of spirit. Do you understand mother in the world of spirit? No. Okay. Do you understand a grandmother who acted like a mother in the world of spirit, please? No. See? There we go down. Down with the sheep. Hmm. Let me... So you don't understand a mother in the world of spirit? No. Let me just go for it because I just need to get that out of the of the way. So if it's no, 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 then then we know that something is really going wrong here. Do you know? I am aware of uh, discussions with mom, arguments with mom, not always seeing eye to eye with mom. Do you understand that in your life? Sorry, but no, we get on really well. Okay. No, that's fine. That, that's really that's really okay. What about mom in law? Um, I don't know my current mom in law. Okay, you don't know her. Mm, no, she was ab know. absent. Okay. That's the best way to describe it. Absent. Okay. Just, just then. Let me get that. Former, out. Ma former mother in law in spirit. Sorry. I have a former mother-in-law in spirit. Four? A former, a past from my okay. first marriage. Okay. So, would you understand the relationship that I explained that? No. no. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to be difficult, honest. I, I never said that, did I? No. Okay, good. Because I need, I need just to maybe I'm, I'm, I'm still connected with the, with the last one or not. So, mm -hmm. so give me a moment, okay? Has nothing to do with you. Has nothing to do with me. It's just what I was aware of. Interesting. Okay. okay. I have grandmothers in spirit, but neither of them were like mothers. No, no. It's okay. I, um, I need to come away from that one, okay? Yeah. So I just need yeah. that moment to just... Yeah. Re refocus okay do you understand um i feel that um i know i have a gentleman now with me here but i oh know God. his personality he's he's kind of withdrawn he, it's not easy to approach for me so normally when i have that it's a light I, I know that that there must be a uh, uh, he must be a person that wouldn't like to stand out in the crowd, who wouldn't want to bring his personal life into the public. I haven't, I, I'm not quite sure about his, his, uh, the relationship to you, so I need you to be open-minded. Would you understand a, a gentleman in the world of spirit who was very private, who was very quiet, I have to say, not sharing mm -hmm. that much. Do you understand that, please? Yeah, I think so. Okay. If not, you just say. Yeah, Otherwise I will. I'll go down with the with the Titanic. See, <laughs> Nick has grew has 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 because he he blew the trumpet. Um, <laughs> but also, I know with him because all of a sudden he is he's he's presenting him himself very nicely dressed so i know that on occasions it was important for him 
to 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 dress apart and smart especially with celebrations i know that there is a family connection to you so i know this is family and i know that there is a gentleness with this man i have to say mm -hmm. very gentle very very um almost admiring watching you mm -hmm. because because it seems that whatever you had to go through in life you had to go through in life on your own does that make sense mm -hmm. you you somehow had to find the solutions and nobody even though there were people willing to help and to support you always had to do it yourself yeah and this is such you know and and what is really really incredible here never ever did you get frustrated or or um angry with the world you still saw the positivity in life there's always a bright side exactly but he's speaking about that he doesn't mm -hmm. like to speak about himself which makes it really difficult for me to bring this evidence that we are mm -hmm. looking for to really place him but there is a fatherly love coming from him and fatherly mm -hmm. love for me it frustrates me because it's like treading on eggshells mm -hmm. but but treading on eggshells i know you know situations where you have to tread on eggshells does that make sense mm -hmm. and and the frustration that is with that one is like there is there is almost no avenue that you can actually tread on without going down with the ship mm -hmm. it's like it's, it's incredible he is very intelligent with him there is a mind of in not that other people are not intelligent here, but I know that there is an education with this man. Okay. There is an intellect with this man. I mm -hmm. seem to be able to make um, um, conclusion. There is a, pro a process. When I say a, a mind of process, it's like this is a thinker. Before mm -hmm. he acts, he thinks it through. Mm hmm is is like I know that with him I would understand plans. Oh yes. You see, I would understand that how it yeah. would have to be, where it would struggle, and how things need to be put mm -hmm. together. Does that makes sense. Yes. And you see, this is really interesting because <laughs> are you an IKEA girl? Not really. No. Okay. Just, just because there's the fun side. Because people say IKEA furniture is really difficult to put together, mm -hmm. but somehow within your genetics, what you have inherited, you are able to see a plan and to execute that plan, even though the plan is uh, insufficient. Yep. Yeah. And and you see, he knows that because he. And I know that that you know that you have that trait from him, mm -hmm. because because what is really interesting with his mind is like I know he knows hardship. I know he knows about turning the pennies, so not having much money. Mm -hmm. But I also know that there is always positivity in life. Yeah, always positivity in life. And we will not, in any circumstances, give up. True. How hard life will get. And I tell you, this man knows losses. Not mm -hmm. just loss, losses. Yes. And he saw things that for other people would have been... Um... Do you understand him being at war? No. Okay. But it feels to me that he's so traumatic experience or, or what, what other people would really struggle with and he would just go on in life and try to see the beauty and the peace of it. He's a peacemaker. That's what I want to say. Oh, yeah. 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 Peacemaker. Um, you try to make peace too, but not always successful. Is that right? Well... <laughs> like... I 
try. I try. Yeah, yeah. People don't see it my way for some reason. Well, okay. So, so you, yeah. Thank you very much for 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 that one. And it, it's just he is just for me. It's it's a really incredible person. I would have loved to spend time with him. So would I. Yeah, honestly, because there is such a wealth of wisdom, but also he has this kind of teaching people, but not being a teacher. Yeah. Not with this one. Yeah. Smoothly, gently. And mm -hmm. I hope I hope you can understand that. Just let me finish that, Nick. Be because, Tracy, you mean it very well with people. Mm -hmm. And you actually know very quickly what people should do to have a better life. Yeah. And sometimes you get very enthusiastic about that. Yeah. <laughs> well, at, least in, at least in the past. And, mm -hmm. and some people don't always uh, react to that so positively. Does that Not make everybody sense? everybody wants advice. <laughs> exactly. So well done, you. The journey continues, I have to say. Thank Not you. Always, Thank but, you. Uh, very well done. And, and I just see IKEA. I'm not making any advertisers here or something. You know what? I believe it's my dad, and he made a living out of making cardboard boxes. Thank you very much. You see I, everywhere I, in IKEA. I had, to, I had to be a bit. He didn't really make it quite clear that it was that. I yeah, felt. Yeah, he made you struggle for it. Sorry. He'd make you struggle for it. Well, that's what I meant with private. Yeah. One doesn't just tell anybody their life mm -hmm. story. And it's but, his birthday today. Oh, oh well oh, done. Thank you wow. very much. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you very much. Listen, Nick, was there Lynn saying about her mother, mother-in-law? Yes, we was. Uh, we were. We, we we were just discussing the. Um, that the, the, the energy can always very much feel uh, a, a, about the the relationship can feel as an attitude rather than an actual relationship. Um, and sometimes we can reject that uh, connection uh, based on how we felt about that person. But what we sometimes forget as recipients is how that person felt towards us is what's mm -hmm. coming through. So sometimes, and certainly with the, the, the description about you going it alone, it mm -hmm. certainly very much feels to me uh, from what I've seen in the past with rejected messages and not necessarily being able to understand what's coming through. It certainly sounds to me like because of your independence, that is what that um, that feeling would have been as the, the distance and the difficulty was sometimes, why won't she let me in? Um, and, and that is very much what I feel David was picking up on. Okay. Um, so, well, thank you very much, Nick. I'm not quite sure about that one. So, but Tracy, you, could, <laughs> you could take everything about your dad, though. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank and you. And everything thank that you. he said. Uh, thank you, Nick. Really, really, but but there would have been more. There needed to be more evidence. That, oh, of course, of uh, course. But yeah, I, I can, thank you so you... much for helping me. That's but I'm sure fine. this this mom mom in law I have to say is for someone who is listening in. So whoever maybe in that case, maybe just take case it. Case. Okay. Yeah. But she got the message in the end. And this is, no, I have absolutely. to say, I have to say, um, Trace, it's lovely to meet you. Everyone's you loving too. your hair as much as your oh, message. Oh, thank you. Um, thank you know, you've, you've tempted our, our man in the north to try that with his nails. So well done for that. <laughs> um, well, I, was, I, I was thinking you'd probably say about the BBC and do not adjust your screens. Normal service will be resumed. Oh, absolutely <laughs> not. Absolutely not. We love a bit of colour here. <laughs> Can I have an, a, a, a question? Yes. When you chose the last sitter, did you change your mind? No, no, because you've got one more to come. The oh, final I? one. Yeah, <gasps> the final one. She's oh, now coming. Oh, Hi, Tracy. That's all right. But um, but no, well done, mate, for, 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 for thank you. That and thank you for coming on, Tracy. God bless you and see you soon. Thank you. You too. Bye. Mwah. Brilliant. No, seriously, I have to say, and, and I, I will not allow any rejection of what I'm about to say.
is that the quality of a medium is not about all of the yeses. It's about how the no's are handled. Little ways taught me three no's move on to a new link because you're not going to get anywhere with it. And <laughs> you did that. You got a link that yeah. was understood and accepted. Yeah. And for me, it's 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 easy for people to say when it's all going well, it's great. But when you when you have a bit of a difficulty in communication, you know, to actually pull it back is pleasing. So I'm going to reward you now with a special treat. Thank and you. And your final recipient. What time is it, Hannah? Oh. It's a bully special prize. And of course, bully special prize tonight, Hannah, goes to you. Yeah. The final reading. So I'm going to leave you two to it for a few minutes. And help, and yeah. and no. So I'll see you in a sec. Yeah. Hi, Hello. Anna. Hi. Hello, David. Is that your mum? Yeah. Hi, David. Yes, I'm mum. Yes. What, what's your name, Mum? I'm Samantha. Ah, oh, Samantha. Oh, look that little pup. And this is Henry. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. So let's have a look what we can do. <laughs> Are you excited, Hannah? Yes. So. Yes. I try not to let you down, okay? <laughs> so Samantha, maybe, maybe, maybe there is a well because you're from family anyway, so that there, there is an inter inter uh, interlinked connection, okay? Thank yes. you so much, um, Hannah. Do you understand your granddad in the world of spirit, please? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 And. Do you know what? It's, it's really interesting. Though that granddad is 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 kind of the same. Is is like he stands there, he's watching, but he's not saying that much. Yeah, yeah. So so he would he would speak when he would say something when he thinks it is necessary to say something. But if there wasn't yeah. something to be said, yeah. he would just be quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what? But also, what I feel is there is such a gentle nature within him, but you wouldn't have seen that from the outside if you didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Because he could be very authoritarian. He looked authoritarian, not that he was, but he looked yeah. so he would instantly yeah. create um, the feeling of, oh, wait, this is a man you have to respect. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that was actually good. Because there is there is a mind behind that. And I, I seem to mm -hmm. know he knows about um negotiations. He knows about um dealing with people, but also he knows yeah. about to be witty and a bit careful. Would that make sense within his yeah. professional life? Um, I'm not sure about that one. Okay, let me try to put that differently. So, with your, is it your dad, Samantha? No, it would be my husband's. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. There's a family gathering. I have to say here. Um, okay, so it's your husband's father your grandfather what i want to say with that one is um he would observe before he would go into interaction with other people so you had to um you had to earn his trust first he wouldn't just trust naively okay. right okay he would always have this thoughts. He's very, very um, thoughtful. Mm -hmm. It's not just. It's not just. 
he he would he would be in a room, but he would observe what is going on in the room. So actually, he sees more than people thought that he knew. Okay. Mm -hmm. Does that make is sense? It, is this Hannah's granddad? It's not my granddad. No, well, I um, no, I think well, I don't know. Is the answer right? Yeah. Okay. So let me work with that. But would would the negotiation side, dealing with people, make sense to your granddad, Samantha? Still not sure about that, but then... Okay. Because I the, the reason why I say that is you like to observe people as well, Samantha. Yes. Mm. Mm. And you know about negotiation. You're not so easily convinced one. You would <laughs> read the fine prints. Very much, yes. yes. And I have to say, this is within the family. Yeah. That comes from the family. This is not, we are, we are trained to be aware that not every person means it well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, Hannah, I have to say, yeah, you are too. If somebody tells you something, you know, mm, not quite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and people seem to underestimate your and your your cleverness. I have to say, I, I I'm not wanting to insult or anything. But there is there is people underestimating what your little eyes, beautiful eyes, are actually seeing. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. yeah, and you know, it's like it's like grant that you see mm -hmm. a lot, but you're not always talking about it. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And you know, I know that grant that knows that sometimes what you see is not always making you feel good yeah but you're not the one talking about that because you don't want to upset or concern your mama mm -hmm. no. yeah mm -hmm. even though i know that mama knows when you had such an experience it's right isn't it yes yeah, yeah. and i know that mama would then be a mother lion Mm -hmm. Who has to hold herself back and say, mm -hmm. Hannah is mostly capable yeah. in living her life and coping with everything that she has to face. Yeah. It's right, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Even yeah. though sometimes as a mom, it's not easy. No. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. And I know that that in the world of spirit knows about that. Mm -hmm. okay. But also there, what, what I want to say is this, this, this quality coming is like this strength that he had within himself mm -hmm. right. to be that, that almost uh, like uh, a rock within the sea, rough sea, where you mm -hmm. thought nothing can shake him. Okay. Mm -hmm. And would you understand that with your dad, Tana? That your dad is very strong too, or appears to be very strong. Mm, yeah, mummy. Yeah, yeah. That. Anybody after my family? Get mm -hmm. through me first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. there is such an appreciation for because family is really important. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more yeah. important than family. And holding yeah. together and sticking together. So there, there is kind of I know that there must be a celebration coming up or 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 something, a remembrance where he's getting dressed because it seems that he liked the family gathering together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you can't take it now, just think about it. Oops. Okay. Yeah. Well, we're planning a big, you know, we can get together. But you didn't. Sorry? You didn't. You don't. 
No, we're going to plan a big party when we can get together again. Okay, listen, I just want you to repeat that because I don't know about this one. <laughs> so thank you very much for working with me. There is, there is a lot going on in, within the world of spirit and there is such a strength there for the family and such a pride, yeah. Hannah, okay? Yeah. You just yeah. do whatever you want to do. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Nope. Okay. Oh. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank yeah. you, ladies. Thank you, thank you very much. Brilliant. Lovely thank to you. see you both as well, my darlings. And I have to confirm, I will say this much, one of the best ever givers of healing that I have ever had is from that young lady underneath me there. She's an excellent, excellent healer. Um, so absolutely spot on again, David. Thank you so much. And we'll see you both at the end. Yeah, definitely. Thank Which you. Which will be in just a couple of minutes, actually. <laughs> see you soon. Well, David, um, that concludes the demonstration of mediumship. And I have to say, the love is being shared. And I know you don't like hearing it, but I'm telling you anyway. Um, everyone is just absolutely in awe of the work you've done for us tonight. And I have to agree, the evidence has been spot on. But don't leave it just up to me. We're going to now bring Reverend Lynn up while I deal with a technical glitch that I think she's trying to tell me about. Um, and um, I will bring her up and we can have a, a chat. So, Lynn, how are you? You need to unmute, though, by the way, darling. You... I'm trying to get you to delete. I'm, this, I'm there. Uh, idiot. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Don't worry. I'm, I'm disappointed. Who is, um, he wants to um, do something about a tough time in your marriage or relationship, a spell doctor. <laughs> we all need a spell doctor. And if you want your ex back, you can contact somebody and get it solved or slobbed, as he put. <laughs> oh, my. You know, this is where spiritualism and spiritualist mediums are so different from, you know, this image of, of so-called, you know, witchery and, and spells and things. You know, the idea that you can force or control another human being through casting some kind of spell or curse on them is just terrible. And it's anathema to us as spiritualists and as spiritualist mediums, you know, to think that you've got people like that who, who will, you know, obviously take money for trying to get somebody's ex back to them. You know, if somebody's ex doesn't want to get back to them, you could give somebody a million pounds. <laughs> it's not going to happen. <laughs> but, you know, um, so it, that was what I was hopping around about. David, you've done so well. Thank you very you much. You know, it's so Thank difficult you. to work like this. Um, you know, it's almost like having to give people private sittings in public. And I know that uh, the television programmes, the shows, like the ones that Colin used to do, Colin Fry, you know, they edit it all up. So, of course, you know, there's loads and loads left on the cutting room floor, as we used to call it, and nobody sees the arms and R's and no's, and I don't know about that, and no, she didn't, no, he wouldn't. You know, that's all cut out, and you only get the, oh, he's wonderful, you know. So Colin was a good medium. He was a good church medium, and he was a very knowledgeable medium. He was actually with the Noah's Ark Society. He was the education officer for the Noah's Ark Society for physical mediumship. Uh, absolutely wonderful guy. And um, the thing is that they used to get him up doing on, a, on the show a private sitting. So we'd all sit in sort of to watch how he was giving. Um, and really, this is what reminds me of what we're doing here. You know, you're expected to sort of give somebody a private sitting and they're not necessarily going to be able to accept what you're saying straight away or, you know, and, and we have a finite amount of time in which to sort of, you know, tell them the information we've got. So the reason that I, <laughs> the reason that I commented, I thought I was commenting privately, David, to Nick, because it said a private chat at the top of the thing. It says private chat. And because I'm not terribly... <laughs> Not terribly. Well, I'm not a young person. Let's face it. I'm an old person, and I have a problem. And uh, I thought, well, private chat must be a private chat. 
So I was privately saying to Nick, look, you know, I was feeling sorry for what happened. <laughs> and I thought, well, you know, he comes to Liverpool, goes online, and like it's being broadcast, and this person is saying, no, 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 you know. And like and like Nick said, of course I trained all my mediums, you know, if you're in a in a public demo and you get three no's, forget it. Don't bother because you're in a public demonstration. And the idea of a public demonstration is you are proving survival. You know, so the individual person that you're giving the message to, actually, although they feel very important and it is important for them at the time, when you're when you're <laughs> you're actually working for the other side, you're actually working with spirit. <laughs> so you're you're working to give evidence of survival. So one person saying no. You know, three no's is enough, you know, because them over there, they say, that's it, we're not doing any more for that person, go to the next one. I mean, the worst I got was Doris, because my helper, Doris, on me, on, on the platform, she, when I, I was quite new, and she was saying to me, go to this one, go to that one. And one person she picked out, I, I did not want to go to him. He looked like a a, a, a heavyweight boxer. And he was sitting there with his arms crossed like this, you know, don't give me a message, I'm not interested. I don't know what he was doing in the church. Maybe he was on a bet. Anyway, she made me go. I said, I don't want to go to him. Go to him. Uh -huh. Anyway, I left him crying, so thank God for that. He was convinced. <laughs> but the fact is this, that you can't always do that and you've only got a, a, that finite yeah. amount of time to actually convince everybody that you know what you're talking about, that you've got somebody there who wants to talk to somebody here. And if they're saying no, because they can't actually relate to what you're saying to them, it, it's a real problem. <laughs> One of the things I always say, say to my my people, right, my my students, my tell me dim, my students, is, you know, if if you you, you can't convince people, you know, you have to cut the link and you and you can't be a bingo medium you can't just throw things out but I watched somebody do that at a church service the other night and it was very successful why because everybody you know all the comments and all the people that are tuned in you say I've got a man here he's got a flat cap on his name is Charlie you know he died from cancer he had a stomach thing and he had a stick and he liked the dogs and he liked to walk and a blur and you get about five people going yes i know him <laughs> so then you can, you can whittle it down but everybody feels everybody feels they've had a message at the end of it you know so um you know and it's saying here microsoft out out look i should click that off anyway so obviously microsoft have had enough of my lecture <laughs> But yes, yeah, so David, I think you did extremely well. You're a very handsome guy and a lovely personality. And you're a good medium. And you did get who you said you had, because I could see them, you know. You know, I could see this woman waving her fist. So I think that the lady that you had was very like her. And no, no wonder she came through. But, you know, it takes a lot of owning up to. And especially if you don't think people loved you. Yes, on Thank that note, I much, will Jane. shut up. <laughs> but no, no, that's fine. Especially as you disagreed with me about my address. <laughs> <laughs> I always get my own back. <laughs> Thank you very much. My good luck. Surgery. Surgery. Oh. Bless you. Thank Lovely. you very much. Thank you for the upliftment. Thank you for the upliftment. And the explanations, and, the explanations. and, um, and um, for all those what let me just all those, a for all those watching, um, I am one of Lynn's students, so you can see what I've had for the last 20 years. You can see why I've got laughter lines and smile lines, and you can see why I also push myself hard sometimes because uh, this is the lady that, that really does bring it out of you, I have to say. Um, and it's nice to see that Trace is actually not finishing her reading crying, but laughing, um, because as everyone knows, I can still see you after you've come off the screen. Um, so once again, Lynn, thank you so much. And of course, I absolutely second everything Lynn said. 
uh, regarding your demonstration tonight, mate. Absolutely stunning. Um, and there's so much love uh, on the uh, on, on the, the, the chat. Um, I have managed to get rid of the spam. Yes, I have. You just need to refresh the page, Lynn, but don't do it until it's over. Otherwise, you'll lose us. Uh, <laughs> it stays there until you hit refresh, but it's gone forever now. Um, as soon as you go back in. It's fine. You said you didn't understand technology. It's all right. Anyway, my friends, let's all um, give a big thank you to uh, David. And uh, for those who um, cannot read his uh, web page, which he's put there, but all we've got is www. I will say that it's blendingmedium.com if you want to have a look at his website. So there you go. Bit of a plug for you, dear. Is it sissy? She's now going to go and have a look. So. Thank we'll get the mind. service over before she comes back and gives you editing tips because she does that to me all the time too. That's okay. um, let's let's get everyone back up on the screen for the final prayer that is still with us. So there's Linda, there's Trace, still smiling, of course. And here is Alan's glasses <laughs> and forehead. And of course, Sam and <laughs> Hannah and Bully as well. Thank you. Oh, there he is. He's, he's awake. Bless you all. Um, I, I will bring up Tracy is still there in black screen footage, but she can hear us now and she has made comments for you to read later, David. Well, friends watching at home, thank you all for being part of what has been a truly uplifting night, a wonderful demonstration of mediumship from David. And as always, very uplifting and um, informative words from Reverend Lynn. Um, everyone always looks forward to this, I know, and I love reading the comments down the side. The, the sense of community and friendship that I see there makes it all worthwhile. So friends, let's join together and say that. Great spirit, Father, Mother, God, we thank you for the opportunity to come together as friends, to unite under your banner of love and hope and friendship and to witness that life is indeed eternal. We thank you, great spirit, for all that life brings us when it comes to the community that we have for we know that that community and that friendship will guide us through even when it does feel dark. We know that dawn is not far away. So until we meet again, great spirit, may everything we do be in love, in truth and in light. Amen. 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 And I'd like to thank all of our recipients for coming on. I'd like to thank Reverend Lynn, thank Alan for his reading and of course, Sam, Hannah, Henry and Bully as ever. Um, I think I've covered everybody. Oh, no, I haven't. David, what a wonderful night. Your mediumship's superb, and I'm not backing down on that. And I'm completely going to say and get the final word that I was absolutely right about that first message uh, to Trace too. But there you go. I win on that one because I've got the button control. So thank, thank you all you for much. being part. Thank you all for being part of tonight. It's a pleasure and a privilege as always to join you all on a Thursday night. But until next week, May the peace of the great spirit go with you all. God bless and good night. This is Little Port signing out.